Loneliness is a pervasive condition that impacts overall health and the mental state of individuals in many societies, irrespective of their economic standing, level of development or wealth. In the United Kingdom, a nation with a population exceeding 66 million, over 9 million people are currently grappling with profound loneliness. This problem has grown to such an extent that the government has taken measures to combat it by establishing an agency and designating a minister with a specific responsibility for alleviating loneliness, especially among the elderly. Elderly people come together in small groups at tables. These gatherings don't take place in retirement facilities. All of the participants have their own homes and adequate income to sustain themselves. What they're missing, however, is companionship to ease their feelings of loneliness. Many of these seniors are leading solitary lives. It's very hard to join because I've done it after I lost my husband. And my two daughters was on to me, you must join. And they fetched me here one day, but I wouldn't come in. And then a couple of weeks after, I came down on my own and I stood here and I listened and I went in. <laughs> and I was very, very oh, pleased. They're a nice group of ladies and you can talk to them. And very social. It's lovely. Yeah, I really enjoy it one day a week. It's nice. This is a predicament that senior citizens across the globe are facing, living in solitude as their grown-up children have relocated. Loneliness gives rise to a host of mental, physical and social challenges. The UK government has introduced a strategy known as social prescribing. This approach incorporates the use of social settings to combat loneliness, alongside medical assessment and medication. Prior to the appointment of a Minister for Loneliness, multiple charitable organisations came together for an initiative aimed at addressing loneliness among the elderly, known as To End Loneliness. One of the central components of this effort involves the establishment of fresh communal spaces and the active promotion of social engagement among the elderly, beyond the confines of their homes. Age UK, an organisation that collaborates with the United Kingdom's extensive senior population, offers dedicated venues where older people can gather. This provides a vital opportunity for them to escape the isolation and loneliness experienced at home, and instead engage in social interactions with their peers in a safe and supervised environment. It's a lovely group. It's a very friendly group. And I think one of the reasons it's so friendly is because we use just one big table. So we all together all the time. Whereas when you have individual tables, it becomes a bit clicky. And so we're not a clicky group. We're a very friendly group. One cultural practice among men in the Western world is to engage in gardening or small-scale craftsmanship. Some parts of their homes have been converted into workshops or storage spaces for tools and equipment, commonly referred to as sheds. These three adjacent cargo containers, positioned on the grass, have been given a fresh coat of green paint. Inside, they've been cleverly converted into storage spaces and workshops catering to the craftsman's needs. In this setup, two elderly people collaborate, assisting each other in the assembly of wooden doll's houses and small, delicately painted wooden toys. This craftsmanship is the result of dedicated seniors who possess a deep passion and skill for woodwork. They devote their time and talents to craft these remarkable pieces. How long does it take for you to build this? Couple of hours. Couple of hours? Really? Yeah. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> That's all it is. So you come here every day? Monday, Tuesday and Friday. Mm -hmm. Wednesday and Thursday I'm doing something else. 
how you like about this place? <laughs> it's all sort of uh, social interaction, really. Mm. I like that best of all. Wood is cut meticulously, sanded to perfection, adorned with vibrant paints, then expertly assembled using small nails and wood glue. These components are skillfully shaped into an array of items, including dolls, miniature furniture, and home decor, each a unique design. For instance, there are charming, unfinished, cow-shaped dolls, which double as storage containers, and an assortment of animals like pigs, dogs, and unicorns. When they need a break, these elderly artisans take a moment to sit, relishing cups of coffee and indulging in lively conversation over cookies. Within this vibrant green enclosure lies a miniature realm, where senior citizens can immerse themselves in beloved pastimes, come together, converse, share ideas and socialize with one another. This setting contributes significantly to their emotional well-being compared to the solitary moments. To some, it might merely resemble a tool shed, but for these individuals, every piece of wood and the camaraderie of like-minded friends transform it into a sanctuary where they can find solace and respite from loneliness. Extensive research, conducted by psychology professor Julian holt lundstadt of Brigham Young University in Utah in the United States, has revealed some compelling findings. Her work, comprising over 148 studies with participation from 300,000 individuals, consistently demonstrates that nurturing strong social relationships can significantly lower the risk of premature death by as much as 50%. Furthermore, an additional 70 comprehensive research studies, encompassing a vast sample of over 3.4 million people from the United States, Europe, Asia and Australia, clearly indicate that feelings of loneliness, social isolation and a sense of emptiness pose equivalent risks for premature mortality as those associated with obesity. What is even more disconcerting is that the research conducted by this psychology professor highlights the widespread nature of loneliness, now often referred to as a loneliness epidemic. Significantly, it's essential to recognize that loneliness transcends generational boundaries, affecting individuals of all age groups. In the United Kingdom, there is a growing trend of young individuals living in isolation and grappling with loneliness. To address and alleviate this issue, an effective strategy involves establishing readily accessible public spaces and nurturing a social environment that encourages people to connect and provide support to one another. The concept of co-living, where individuals reside together in communal housing, is gaining traction in the UK. This approach appears to tackle the concerns of both living space and social atmosphere effectively. In a scenic, hilly region in Wales, some have opted to relocate and establish a close-knit community known as Tippy Valley. This not only serves as a means to economize on living expenses, but also serves as an effective countermeasure against loneliness. In London, various private organizations have developed co-living spaces to serve as communal living environments for young individuals. These spaces offer compact private rooms equipped with essential amenities, alongside common areas for communal activities and social interaction. The layout of these spaces is deliberately crafted to facilitate daily encounters among residents, be it in the kitchen, the laundry room, lounge, fitness area or bar. Co-living is, is offering people not only a place to live, but also a place, a place to thrive, a place to come and meet new people, a place to meet um, potential mentors, business partners, to learn new skills. And I think um, that is a really attractive uh, option for people who are coming to London and, and therefore should be supported by the government. 
Typically, the inhabitants of these spaces are young professionals without a family of their own, which alleviates privacy concerns. This demographic is at the outset of their careers and actively exploring new avenues in life. Sharing a communal space with individuals from diverse professional backgrounds presents a valuable opportunity to build connections, exchange ideas and expand one's network, thereby facilitating interactions with new individuals who can bring fresh insights or initiate innovative endeavors. Research underscores the fact that young adults are often more susceptible to loneliness when compared to the elderly. I like to think of it more as an investment. Um, I've not only made friends, but in that sort of friendship, um, done a lot of networking. Um, so I've met a lot of people that I now work with as well. Um, I'm currently developing an app with someone who lives in the building. For example, in gaming, you can go downstairs like here in the lobby or there where there is the bar and there are lots of people like me who are alone like yeah. so you can miss others if you want to see more great content from all over the world please like the video subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon thank you In contrast, however, young individuals typically have more resources and social avenues to combat this issue, encompassing financial means and social support networks. Various activities are designed to motivate senior citizens to take physical exercise together, affording them a further respite from the burden of loneliness. These activities can address the fundamental cause of loneliness, which is a natural survival mechanism in humans. The objective is to nurture connections and sustain relationships with others. An effective strategy for mitigating loneliness involves establishing communal spaces where individuals can convene and engage with one another. In the battle against loneliness, the UK government partners with a range of technology companies to examine collectively how existing technology is contributing to feelings of isolation and how to tackle this issue. As part of the school curriculum, starting in 2020, there's been an initiative to educate children about loneliness starting at the elementary school level, with the subject matter being seamlessly integrated into lessons. Within the medical sector, the government lends support to exploring various alternatives beyond traditional prescriptions for patients grappling with loneliness or isolation. This includes encouraging them to take part in artistic activities or joining baking classes, fostering new connections with people in various settings, in the coming years, there's a possibility that loneliness could become more widespread. But technology might hold the key to addressing this. Elderly individuals are now venturing into the realm of virtual reality, or VR, for the first time. VR experiences enable them to journey to uncharted destinations, even if their physical well-being is not at its peak. Maybe then you can... Ex expand your mind and broaden your horizons and go and see things without leaving your living room sofa. The technology is their friend, but they don't need to be intimidated. You're not going to break something. You're not going to ruin it. It's not going to crash. If you have some general precautions like don't open attachments to email, use good antivirus software, and don't spill your coffee on your keyboard and you're okay. Sporting distinctive headsets, they radiate smiles and laughter, even in their solitude. Surprisingly, this is one of the methods used to counteract loneliness. VR technology can serve as a bridge to re-establish connections with the tangible world. Studies suggest that after immersing themselves in VR, users are more inclined to communicate and share their experiences with those nearby. 
Moreover, it can contribute to a potential boost in physical well-being of up to 30%. In the future, individuals grappling with loneliness may have the means to address it independently, reducing their dependence on others. Over the course of their lives, senior citizens frequently grapple with diverse forms of loss, culminating in a sense of isolation that can be difficult to circumvent. Within the UK, the issue of loneliness has intensified, alongside the growing elderly population. Persistent and deep-seated loneliness poses significant threats to both physical and mental well-being. It's important to recognize that loneliness is not solely an individual concern, it is also a societal one. The increasing prevalence of loneliness also has broader social ramifications, necessitating the allocation of financial resources and personnel by the government to tackle this issue. Research reveals that for every one pound invested in combating loneliness, there is a corresponding saving of three pounds in public health expenses. The appointment of a loneliness minister in the UK appears to be an investment with the potential for significant returns.